So in the last video, I showed you guys around Longview. And after I put that up, some of you reached out asking, what about Kelso? So for those of you guys that don't know, Kelso, Washington is Longview's little brother next door. So if you've been thinking about making the move to Cowlitz County and you wanna come check out Kelso with me, then stick around because we're heading out there right now. <music> Welcome back everybody. I'm Rick Anderson. Thanks for checking out the channel and thanks for checking out today's video. I really appreciate it and I hope you guys get some good information from it. Do me a big favor if you would before we go check out Kelso. If you guys are getting any useful information out of this content that I'm putting out for you, I'd really appreciate it. If you hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel and tap that notification bell so you know the next time I put out a new video. And as much as I love making these videos for you guys, selling homes is how we pay the bills around here. So if you or anyone you know is thinking about buying or selling a home here in Southwest Washington, I am a licensed real estate broker with eXp Realty, and I'd love helping you guys with buying or selling your next home here in Southwest Washington. So feel free to reach out anytime. You can call, text, email. There's even a link down in the description below to set up a Zoom call. I love hearing from you guys, so don't be afraid to reach out. Kelso sits about 40 miles north of Portland and Vancouver, near the Columbia River and along the banks of the Cowlitz River, and I-5 runs right down the middle of it for easy traveling. Now, there's about 13,000 people in Kelso, so it's a fairly small town. It's roughly a third the size of its neighbor Longview, but because the two cities butt up against each other until you get to know the area, it's going to feel like you're just in one city or the other. Now, like Longview, Kelso was originally built around the local mills, as well as the loggers and the logging camps that were in the hills outside of town way back in the day. So now, way back in the day, Kelso got the nickname of Little Chicago because the town was filled with taverns and brothels that were all there to service, and I do mean service, the local loggers when they would come down from the logging camps by the literal train load. So between the loggers, the mill workers, you can imagine things back in that day got a little bit spicy. So now just like with Longview, Kelso being another manufacturing town, it took a really hard blow to the economy with mill shutdowns, recessions, downsizing, and all the things like that. And it shows as you go through the city. Now a really great example of that is the Three Rivers Mall. So you're going to see the Three Rivers Mall uh, it sits right next to I-5. So anytime you're driving through the area, boom, it's right there. Now, years ago, this place was hopping. It was the place to be. Now, even though there's popular businesses, businesses in here like Sportsman's Warehouse, Planet Fitness, the place literally, it looks like a ghost town. It just looks like another dying shopping mall. Now, maybe it's not that bleak. I don't live up here. I've only been to this mall a handful of times, but take a look around this parking lot. It doesn't exactly scream busy. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Coming into downtown Kelso, it doesn't look all that great. You've got older homes and buildings, and in a lot of cases, they're run down, and they're not real easy on the eyes. Now, I don't want to crap on this town too much because you will find some nice homes in the downtown area. Homes that have been rehabbed or homes that are dated, but at least they've been kept up pretty decently. So don't take what I'm saying as, as that Kelso is just a complete shithole. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to consider moving to Kelso. And I'll be talking about them as we go through the video, so make sure you stick around to the end for all of them. Now, one of the biggest reasons why Kelso might appeal to you is that home prices up here are way cheaper in Clark than in Clark County. Now, down here in the downtown and in the hilltop neighborhoods, there are actually some pretty nice older, little more historic homes for sale right now that are priced well under four hundred thousand. Now, I never like to say that any that things are impossible. But that's damn near impossible to find in Vancouver. In fact, at the time that I'm making this, all but one of the homes uh, in this area here is listed under 400000 
Now, I'm going to be straight with you guys. If you are looking for the subdivision experience, you will not find that here in this part of town. But if you're a first time buyer, you like these older neighborhoods, or maybe you're looking, you know, for a more affordable fix and flip project, there's definitely some options up here for you. Okay, so if we go north of town a few miles up into the Lexington neighborhood, now we're getting into the nicer, quieter subdivision part of Kelso. Now, earlier this year, I helped a really nice guy with buying a home in this neighborhood. And if you're looking for the kind of neighborhood where neighbors watch out for neighbors, then this is it. So to give you a little backstory, after we'd closed on the house and before we'd handed over the keys, my best friend and two of his boys, we went up to the house. We were clearing some stuff out of the garage and out of the backyard for my buyer. And we had some neighbors come up wondering what we were doing. You know, they knew the house was empty. It had been for a bit. So it was a little worrying to them, you know, to see a bunch of rednecks running around, loading up the back of my truck with stuff out of the garage in the backyard. But so it was really nice to see people taking pride in their neighborhood, watching out for their neighbors, even though they didn't even know their new neighbor yet. Now, Kelso and Longview have a lot of things in common. And one of those is that there isn't a lot of new construction going on in either city. But unlike Longview, the new construction development that Kelso does have is a bit on the higher end side. So across the road from the Three Rivers Golf Course, you've got a new development from Garrett Custom Homes called the Retreat at River's Edge. Kind of sounds like uh, some kind of beach resort or something, doesn't it? Now, this is a small development of waterfront homes right along the Cowlitz River. So this development's tucked back at the end of a dead-end road You've got the Three Rivers Golf Course right across the street. So if you love hitting the links, this could be a good option for your new home. Prices in this development are going to run you anywhere from the high 400s up to the mid 800s. Now, Garrett Custom Homes is one of the uh, one of the area's higher end custom builders. So whichever plan you pick, it is going to be a damn nice home. All right. So. If you Google Kelso or you put Kelso in your search on Zello, you're going to see that the city portion of Kelso is pretty small. Like I said, it's a fairly small town, only about 13,000 people. The majority of the area with a Kelso address is mostly rural, which, you know, if you've been looking for reasonably priced acreage in Clark County, you know that you stand a better chance of finding a leprechaun and jacking his little ass for that pot of gold. Well, up here, you can still find homes on acreage that range from your average home on a few acres, like this one that one of my cousins bought a year ago, a little bit over a year ago, to this bad boy that is a musician's hilltop, hilltop retreat with its own recording studio. So Snoop, if you're watching this, looking for a new mountaintop pad, hit me up. All right, back to reality. And... The reality is, is that there's some of the prettiest land up here. Rose Valley, it's a rural area southeast of Kelso. It has a gas station, a school, and that's about it. But it's also got some of the most beautiful land that we have to offer around here in southwest Washington. So if you're looking for that perfect mix of lush green pasture, thick timber, you know, creeks running through your property this is where you need to be looking now rural living tends to attract a certain type of person you know the mountain man or woman the hunter the fisherman the hiker like you get the picture well in addition to having multiple opportunities to live in some of the prettiest spots in southwest washington much of the Kelso area backs up to privately owned timberland that's owned by Weyerhaeuser. And for a fee, yeah, I know, there's always a price tag. Nothing's free in this world. But for a fee, you can get a permit to access their property and hunt, fish, hike, camp for a year. So each permit is good for a year. Now, the unit that they have that is backs up to Kelso... 
if I remember right, that unit is roughly 300,000 acres. So you're going to have plenty of opportunities to get out into the woods and enjoy, you know, fishing, hiking, whatever, hunting. Um, permits go on sale only once a year and they limit the number of permits they sell. So if you want to live far outside of town on a nice piece of property that's close to some more private hunting and fishing spots, you can do all of that up here. Okay, so if you're moving to Kelso or you're thinking about moving to Kelso with the family, naturally you want to know how the schools are. So Kelso being a smaller city and school district, there's not quite 5,000 students in the whole district. But one thing that I found while doing some research for the video is that Kelso goes toe to toe with some of the bigger school districts here in the Vancouver area in categories like on time graduation rate, amount of money spent per student and class size. Now, I'm not going to go into all the stats, but what I am going to do is I'll drop a link in the description below where you can check out the school district report card from the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction, or OSPI, so to make it easier for you. And for being such a small town, one thing Kelso has a good amount of is parks. You've got Tam O'Shanter Park, which albeit sounds more Irish than Scottish, but whatever, uh, which is a 38-acre park along the Coweeman River right in the heart of town. It's right off I-5. You can see it from the freeway. It's easy to get to. So this place has playgrounds, a 500-seat baseball stadium, softball fields, soccer fields, a basketball court, horseshoe pits, 30 picnic areas, and access to a regional trail system. That's just one park. Then you've got splash parks, gardens, and for the skater in your life, the angsty teenager, the town even has a 10,000 square foot skate park. Kelso, so Kelso was actually the home of the first skate park in the U.S. There's your history lesson for this video. That park's long gone, but the one they have now has bowls, rails, and steps, which I assume makes for a good skate park. I really don't know. I know nothing about skateboarding. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed checking out Kelso with me today. If you have any questions about the area or you'd like to work together on buying or selling a home here in Kelso or anywhere in Southwest Washington, feel free to reach out anytime, call, text, email, schedule that Zoom call. You guys know how to get a hold of me and I love hearing from you, so don't be afraid to reach out. Do me a favor before you take off out of here today, if you would, give the video a like, consider subscribing to the channel and tap that notification bell so you know the next time I put out a new video. That's all I got for you today. So until next time, bye everybody.